Like many events and fundraisers in the community, COVID-19 has necessitated a change of the way things are done. And joining me now to talk about the virtual ALS walk is Leanne. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. All right. So first of all, uh, the ALS walk is something that happens every year. Um, for those who aren't familiar with it, maybe you could give us a first a bit of a background about that fundraiser. Yes, uh, well, it is our major uh, fundraiser for ALS Canada um, to support the programs and the research that we do. Um, we hold uh, walks across the country, um, but we have been holding one in Cornwall, I believe, for the last 15 years or so. Excellent. And uh, as we can see from the picture behind you, yes, for eagle-eyed viewers, that is uh, Montreal Road. Uh, so we know it's well attended. It is, it is. It's a great walk. It's a great family event. All right. And why is it important, uh, this event, to, in terms of both raising money, but also awareness? Because there's always usually a, a special guest speaker that talks about their, their struggles with, with the disease. Uh, yes, we do always have a lead family that talks about what they're going through with the disease. Um, and awareness is really important. ALS is one of those diseases that often, um, when you get diagnosed, it catches you unaware, unless you've had somebody else in your community that you know of or personally know of um, you're not really aware of what the diagnosis is um, and so the fundraiser is really important to raise that awareness of what ALS is, is what it's like uh, to live with ALS in your family what it's like to be a caregiver of somebody with ALS uh, but also it is our major uh, fundraiser to fund the programs that we do we do provide um, uh, services to our clients. Uh, we do home visits. We we supply them with all the medical equipment they need as they're going through the disease, um, and we advocate for them uh, on a municipal, local um, level, but also on a provincial and federal level as well for the care that they're getting into their homes and and drug access, all sorts of uh, uh, different um, uh, ways in which we advocate and reasons we advocate for. But we also fund um, ALS research across Canada. And all of that is uh, is very, very important. Uh, but you raised an, an, an interesting point that maybe a lot of people don't realize what ALS is unless they're personally affected by it. So for those who may not be aware of the disease and the extent of it, what can you maybe tell us a little bit about what ALS is? So I'll give you a really brief um, non-medical uh, uh, view of what ALS is. It is a, a terminal illness. Um, when you are diagnosed, you are given two to five years to live. Um, it is a progressive disease in which um, basically what happens is your brain does not uh, give the message to your muscles to move, so they atrophy. So you just uh, go uh, from one area of your body being paralyzed to the next. Um, by the end of the disease, you often uh, can't walk, you, you can't talk, you can't eat, and then you can't breathe. Wow, and uh, it's, it's absolutely uh, imperative that uh, something like ALS Canada is there to, to help uh, both those who are suffering through this, but also their caregivers. Uh, now, so the walk, obviously, as we alluded to at the very beginning, has gone virtual this year. So tell me about that and how it'll work. Uh, yeah, so we're excited to have a virtual walk. Of course, we'd like to be there in person uh, with people and, and walking alongside them. But, you know, we can't do that this year because of COVID-19. So we think uh, we think the virtual walk is a really good way in which to continue to raise awareness, but also continue to get our community to come together to support each other and to raise much needed funds. So we are hosting uh, the virtual walk on June 21st. Um, our walk will kind of unfold um, like a, a normal walk would be just virtually instead of in person. So we will be having guest speakers um, starting at 9.30. Our CEO of ALS Canada will speak. We'll have some clients telling their stories. We'll have some special um, celebrities and guest speakers um, on as well. Uh, that'll take about a half an hour, 15 minutes to half an hour. And then for about an hour, we are hoping that people are going out to walk or to do whatever kind of challenge they want to do uh, that represents a walk. Um, we will be posting uh, pictures of people doing their walks and then we'll do a wrap up at around 11 to 11.30. We'll have some entertainment. Um, we'll have uh, our VP of uh, research come and do a little update on what research is and also uh, again speaking to clients. Wow, that's, uh, that sounds like an excellent time, uh, all for a great cause. And just finally, uh, we know, uh, obviously at the top of this, uh, we alluded to again, COVID-19 has necessitated all these changes, but it can also pose uh, great challenges uh, for people living with diseases like ALS and their caretakers. So uh, what are some of the unique challenges that, uh, that uh, those individuals are facing right now because of the virus? 
Oh gosh, it's been very, very difficult for our clients. You know, the isolation and the loneliness has been very difficult. Uh, but one of the key things that they have to deal with is home care. You know, do they, they need home care because obviously as they become more uh, paralyzed, uh, their caregiver needs more help to take care of the person. Um, and they need uh, home care to come into their house to do that, but they really have to think seriously about whether that's going to happen. You know, as you, as you have seen unfold with COVID-19, um, PSWs, um, God bless them, they're, they're an amazing group of people. Um, they go from home to home to support our clients. Well, doing that really is a risk to our clients, uh, even, even with the protective equipment and the PSWs doing their best. So the caregivers are faced with, do they do, do, the, do the work themselves or do they have home care come in? And it really varies. I mean, if, if, it's, uh, if the client is very advanced, then obviously they're gonna need some home care coming into their house. That, that's sort of one way. Another way is the family support, right? It's very hard for them to get family support, you know, if they're isolating. Um, you know, again, it's the risk for the family to come in. So they have to decide if they're going to see their family and how much they're going to see the family. Uh, you know, traveling, those who have just been diagnosed and have a lot on their bucket list, they've had to put that on hold. So many, many ways in which it's impacted our clients. Absolutely, but uh, it's comforting to know that uh, ALS Canada is there advocating on their behalf and providing support. So just finally, how can people register for the virtual walk coming up this Saturday? Yes, people can register on walk to end ALS slash Cornwall. Uh, it's pretty easy if they have any questions. Um, I don't know if you'll have my contact information uh, posted, but if they have any questions, they can certainly give me a call. I'd be more than happy to get them set up. Excellent. On that note, Leanne, thank you so much for joining me and for all your hard work uh, putting together this year's virtual walk and best of luck uh, with the fundraiser. Thank you and thanks so much for having me.